Hi everyone, Allie here from The Family Meeple and welcome back to the final four days of our 2022 Advent Board Game Countdown. In this series, I have been counting down the top 24 new to me games that I played in 2022. These are all games that I played for the first time in 2022 and that is the only criteria that they needed to make potentially this list. These are not all 2022 games. In fact, most of them are not. A lot of them are older games that I just discovered this year. Today, we're gonna to be talking about game number four, which is La Granja. La Granja is designed by Michael Keller and Andreas Odendahl with artwork by Harold Liska and originally published by Spielworks. So La Granja is a much older game and I have only played this game once and I have only played this game on Board Game Arena. So why does La Granja make my list and why is it so high up? Because I absolutely loved my play on Board Game Arena. I loved it so much in fact that I backed the La Granja Deluxe Master Set on Kickstarter. Now, this master set was supposed to have been delivered in December of this year, but as is typical for Kickstarter games, it is delayed, which is fine, and it should be arriving sometime in the first half of next year. So La Granja Deluxe Master Set will be on one of my solo challenges for next year because a solo mode was included in the new deluxe version edition. But until then, I have played the game on Board Game Arena. And the thing that I loved the most about La Granja was honestly the multi-use cards. So in La Granja, there is a board in the center where you're going to be doing a little bit of area majority um, or kind of area control, a small amount. But the bulk of the game is actually going to be in resource production, resource management, and turning those resources in to achieve different goals and objectives. And there's a bunch of different places where you can turn in these resources so that you can take different actions, get different upgrades, all kinds of things. So again, like a lot of the games that you've seen on this list, La Granja is another one where it's a, basically a big efficiency puzzle where you are given a set of cards and a set of information and said, here, do something with this and see if you can do something more efficiently than everyone else at the table. So in La Granja, you will be playing cards onto a player board in front of you. And there are four locations on your player board that you can play these cards. You can play the cards on the left-hand side and they will represent uh, resource production. So grapes to make wine, uh, wheat, I think. And there was another one. Again, I've only played it once. And so some of my details are a little bit hazy, but this is where you're going to be doing your production on the left-hand side. You can also play it on the right-hand side, which is going to give you access to um, additional donkeys, which lets you make additional deliveries throughout the game. You can start farming pigs as well so it'll give you some stalls for farming pigs it will help you increase i think your hand size and also increase i think your income over on that right side if i remember correctly you guys can also post in the comments on how i'm getting this wrong and uh, how it actually works if you've played it more than i have and then you can place cards on the bottom which will give you additional special abilities with i think they're characters um but basically it gives you a special ability, something that you can do that no one else can. And then you can also play them on the top of your board to give you places where you can deliver the goods that you're producing. Uh, I think they're card, called market stalls or market barrels, something like that. But essentially it's just a order that is specific to you. No one else at the table can fill that order, but you can fill that order when you have the resources. So you'll also be going through a phase where you're going to be drafting dice. And when you draft the dice, you'll be gaining different resources or the ability to take different actions. You can gain um, pigs or you can gain 
the um, wheat or wine or those different types of things. So there's a phase where you're going to be doing that. You're also going to be manipulating your turn order by taking different actions, and then you're going to be delivering all of the resources that you generated. So there's a lot of steps going on in Le Grand Hub, but it's actually fairly intuitive as you start playing through the game. And the original game was, at least in my opinion, not the best looking game. It's very sort of monotone yellow, what people would consider a kind of beige euro. Um, so I wasn't super intrigued by it originally until I saw the master, the deluxe master set that's coming out from board and dice, which looks absolutely stunning. Uh, they've made a lot of improvements. They've improved the player boards, which are going to be double layered so that all of your cards will actually slide under and slide in and you can get things in and out more easily. Like I said, it also is going to include a solo mode, which is one of the biggest turn ons for me with games is if there's a solo mode included, it's more likely to make it into my collection because I can play it by myself, which is the main way that I'm playing most of these mid to heavyweight euros. So the solo mode in the new edition is going to be designed by David Turchi, I think, if I remember correctly. So I'm excited and a little bit anxious to check that out next year because I have heard that his solos can be a little bit daunting the first time or so. But I'm looking forward to playing Le Grand Ha next year a lot more than I did this year. It's one that I keep thinking about and coming back to. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering how a game that I've only played once ends up, ends up on the list higher than a game like um, Great Western Trail that I've played multiple times, but I used the Pub Meeple um, tool to rank all of the games that I played new this year, and this is just the one that kept coming up that if I could play any of the games on this list, which one would I want to play, and Le Grand Ha kept coming up. So that is why it came in at number four on my list of new to me games for 2022. Thanks so much for joining us again for this segment of our 2022 advent countdown. I hope you liked the video. Feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the top three. Until then, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We hope that you're continuing to enjoy your holidays with your family as we approach Christmas particularly. We are getting excited here in our house. Until the next one, we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.